this is Laura Cox and you're listening to Interview Under Fire. All right, everyone, we are here with another episode of Interview Under Fire. This is once again your host in Sunny. And this time I want to welcome back the exceptionally talented French woman in Laura Cox. Uh, Laura, bonjour. That's like the first thing I should have said. Yeah, I'm bonjour. <laughs> Thank it's you a, for having me. But man, here it, it's bonsoir, you know, bon, it's bon uh, soir. 9, 9 okay. p.m. <laughs> yes, that you are right about that. Um, bonsoir. And, you know, obviously mm-hmm. it's an honor again. Always great to have you back here on the IOA podcast. You know, here we are, you know, nearing the end of 2022 somehow and starting the next one with the bang for you with the release of your highly anticipated record, Head Above Water. Yeah. Uh, setting to drop on January 20th through Ear Music. Let me begin, Laura, by first, you know, commending you on all the well-deserved recognition you have been getting so far. I mean, especially you just dropped that recent single, One Big Mess. Mm-mm, I mean, mm-mm. I yeah. absolutely love that song. So much to oh, unpack about this release and what went behind the production process of all this. Before we get to everything, right? <laughs> it's been a minute. Like I said, uh, we talked about it in a pre-interview. <laughs> Um, it's been a minute, over two years since we last got together and talked about what we love about the music. First and foremost, how are you? I didn't even ask you that yet. And then obviously so much has happened since the last two years. I mean, let's catch up. I yeah. mean, I get I get PTSD when I think about like how wild like that year was. Like, how are you? Yes, yeah. How's it's life? really hard and, to yeah, hard to keep track, you know, because yes, uh, so we toured um we toured a, a bit uh during the end of 2019. Yeah. We uh, we toured um yeah until march 2020 then everything stopped uh then uh i went to portugal for a few months then the lockdowns and then uh i finally got inspiration again and um and we recorded the 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 new album at the beginning of this year um right. and it's finally going to be released um in a few months so i'm really really excited because we've been waiting for this for a long time so right now I'm in uh, in a positive mood and really excited about the release. You know, aside from the music, right? And I- I'm always intrigued to hear about other aspects of an artist's life that potentially feed into their creativity and personality. In this case, you know, uh, like I said, sticking on the topic of like what's happened in the last two years, I know we all went through something called a pandemic these last mm-hmm. two years, you know, staying busy, right? Yes. During the even pandemic. In France, was, yes. Even in France. Yeah, it, it was an <laughs> yes. important thing. I think when we spoke last time, it was maybe the pandemic was just fresh in our memory. And it was really still Mm -hmm. fresh right now, but still like two months into it, you know, and we were talking about like how life would affect someone like you, even someone like Mm -hmm. me in the music industry. You know, staying busy during the pandemic was an important thing. But now that I have you here, Laura, you know, did that time you know, open up new things for you that you may not have discovered before about yourself, something that you can take forward with you, maybe something that doesn't involve music. I remember like a month after we spoke, I, I took up baking. I never baked in my entire life. Like I'm, I know how to bake cookies now. So <laughs> I, my, I my listeners cooking. my listeners already know how much I talk about this with my guests. Like, oh, yes. here he goes again. But that's, I like to ask questions mm-hmm. like that, like no, during, really, during the time of lockdown. But because I think uh, before the pandemic, I used to be in my small little world just about everything about rock and roll and that was all I was doing and just just my life and like a simple rock and roll life and I wasn't asking myself a lot of questions but I was happy with this uh and I don't know after the pandemic I I had time to you know reflect on everything I met new people I went abroad uh and I think I opened myself to a lot of things so like you were saying yes Mm -hmm. I got into cooking (laughs) like you (laughs) Uh, I, I surfed, uh, I tried surfing a lot the, these uh, past months and years. Yeah. I'm still a beginner, but I really I really enjoy this. And I also opened myself to new um, kinds of music because, uh, yeah, I used to say uh, there's only rock and roll in life. But in the end, I don't know. I, I feel that my life is more rich now. And um, yeah. it's more, like, yeah, it's uh more interesting when you when you're not so narrow minded and you open yourself to everything you know so i think i open myself uh, on a lot of things uh like uh and it feel it feels good and if people who don't know they, we're we're talking on camera right now obviously you can see my hair has grown since we last spoke <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> this was the, this was the pandemic hair you know i just <laughs> left it growing and my my yes. friends were like no you should keep it you should keep it this is on an action yeah it looks good usually, usually i keep it i appreciate that usually i keep it like at hair's length like mm-hmm. shoulders length last time we spoke so mm-hmm. it's 
it, I was looking back on our interview like a couple, you know, uh, a couple days ago, actually, as I was preparing for this. Okay. And I was like, man, we've the things that we talked about at that time, you know, and Mm-mm-mm. and Laura, uh, something I want to mention your story. Here's the thing. Your story is always something to take inspiration from, by the way. I want to repeat that because it is an important thing to know, because your rise to music fame, make no mistake, right? You had to earn to be where you're at today, you know, from being mm-hmm. a. Uh, I mentioned in our, on our last conversation, you know, for being a YouTuber in your teenage days to headlining shows around Europe yeah. uh, with your own mm-hmm. band. I mean, like like in the late 2000s and when it started and people don't know already. I want to mention, you know, Slash, Joe Bonamassa, ZZ Top, yes. Dire Straits, yeah. all your influences, many of your legends, which, you know, I even grew up with. You know, my mom introduced me mm-hmm. to those bands. And I know we've had a chance to reflect a lot in these last two years. Everything I just mentioned. Right. Do you look back? on things like that you know are you someone who is uh sentimental about things like that i know i'm, I'm nostalgic you know i would i say blockbuster mm-hmm. receipts from like 99 <laughs> yeah that's how nostalgic i am <laughs> i'm not sure i don't think i'm i reached a point where i can really look uh you know uh look over this and uh, just look back and uh and because my career is still just starting i think so there's still a lot of things to be done and i still have mm-hmm. a lot of dreams so um Maybe I'm going to do this in a few years, uh, but uh, I'm not ready to look back yet. So I yeah. I appreciate, I really enjoy this whole journey from YouTube to the stage. And I'm really grateful and uh, and uh, happy about this because I think a lot of people who started on YouTube are just going to stay on YouTube. They don't necessarily uh, end up on, on big stages and maybe mm-hmm. they don't want this because they're, it's really a, a different world, the YouTube world from the the live uh the, the live shows and the festival and the the band uh, on the road you know so um i'm really uh grateful and, and thankful to be able to uh, combine both because uh, for me it works and I, I like i love this and one of the things that makes you know the laura cox band the laura cox band is a live presence that you put on stage i've seen what you've done this year laura like holy mm-hmm. shit i mean playing at hellfest uh poland rock yeah. rockapolast I mean, that health show was so good. If people who haven't seen that uh, footage yet, go check it out. Considering how much touring is going on lately, isn't it crazy? We were talking about how this was like stripped away from us two two years ago. Now here we are. Everything's yeah. back. But I feel like everything's back even like 10 times more. Live music yeah. is at a... People are so excited about this now. And, you know, it, it's crazy to think about because I, I'm going to show tonight, for example. Uh, Black Veil Brides is headlining with the Treyu. Mm-hmm. And oh. it's not it's not something that's like... This is a show and there are other shows at the same time because live music is at a point of saturation because everyone is touring at the same time. Like fans don't get to go all the, go to all these shows. Yeah. Like, do you feel the same yeah. way? Is that good? Is that bad? Now that everyone is ready to just go out? I'm the not open? sure. <laughs> uh, I think I really hope we're not going to have to face another wave. of. Uh, I hope not either. But, uh, Gosh. <laughs> yes. But, uh, but right now I feel like, yeah, um, shows are happening again for the first time in the uh, years i've i've been to two uh, two concerts in uh in two in three weeks i think uh, uh the yeah the past uh past weeks and it didn't happen for a really really long time so yeah. i'm happy that life is starting again it feels like it and people are very excited about this but i also hear that um even if the bands are really excited to be on tour again and the audience is really uh happy about this I think a lot of people are still scared to go out because we can notice this at our shows and even the shows, the rock shows I, I've been to recently, the the venues are not full. It's really hard to mm-hmm. to fill the venues right now because I think some people are, um, I don't know, still not out of this uh, pandemic. Uh, yeah. I don't know if yeah, they're scared it, or maybe the yeah. prices of the tickets or for a lot of reasons, uh, it's not, it's hard to go back. And, it, and all, all valid points. And, and by the way, we're, technically, we are still in a pandemic, right? Because yes. obviously, yeah. I, I, I mean, I think we're seeing the light at the end, end of the tunnel now. And, it, you know, it's it's interesting to think about because I've had friends. Do you remember the live streaming that when we, we talked about this, how live streaming was taking over? And yes. I've had I've had friends who now they would text me and be like, they purposely don't go to these shows because mm. you know there's there's social anxiety and mental health comes with you know being in big yes. crowds and, and mm-hmm. that's an important thing to note. And they would tell me, "Hey, Sonny, it was really cool getting to see you know Laura Cox, for example, on on a live mm-hmm. setting, seeing a band like Gojira. They did the live mm. streaming, you know, bands like that. 
And, but man, it's just, not the same on the live stream. No, it's I not. And, you, and it's, it's cool just, to mosh in your own room, right? It's cool to do that. But how much longer can yeah. you do it for? But yeah, it's it's nice if you cannot go out of uh, your your house. But yeah. now that we can do it, I think there's nothing like a real rock show when you're standing, when you're in a crowd, and 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 moving and jumping. It's nothing like a you're not uh, in your on your couch uh, just with a computer on your lap. And uh, I don't know, it's not yeah. the same for me. Um, uh, Laura, what was the? I gotta ask now. What was the first show you played since the pandemic started? Was it weird for you? Was it? you know uh getting um, getting used to being on the stage again it's like okay this is stage left this is stage right okay i'm gonna be here and you look at talking to your bandmates uh, like i wonder how if it was like overwhelming because that health as crowd was huge you mm -hmm. know that's just one example yeah it's hard to to say because we didn't really have a first show after the pandemic because we had shows even in 2020 you know because in france the rules were changing all the time. Like sometimes you could have yeah. shows that people have had to be sitting with a mask and like a, uh, with a chair in between every peop every every person. So that's right. We, we did a, we did something like that uh, for, yeah. for for a temporary, but uh, you know. Yeah, we had this. So it's, we didn't really have a first show back to normal because we never we we never know if it's going to be the the first one or if there's going to be another wave and no show no no shows again. So. I don't really remember any specific show. Mm -hmm. um, I think, um, I think I remembered the, yeah, the first show where people could be uh, standing up again and uh, no uh, uh, limit, uh, like no no limited crowd. You know, you, you, the yeah. number of people weren't limited in the audience. So yes, it it felt like um, being back to normal, even though some people were still a bit uh, cautious and uh, some people were still uh, wearing the mask um it felt good to feel because when you're playing in front of a sitting yeah. audience it's not the same there i know they're enjoying but they cannot really show show this they're just sitting and watching with the mask you cannot see their faces and um so yeah uh it's kind of half a show you know it's not the same I remember when I went to the uh, uh, this is my I've never seen them live before, which is weird coming from someone like me. I've never seen Metallica in person. They did a mm -hmm. live streaming here in the States uh, at the end of 2020. And it, it was it was very interesting. You know, that was my technically my first show I don't know, during the pandemic or after yeah. the pandemic, however you want to say it. But it was it was sold out. People were like parked out in the like in the in the desert uh it was like in a deserted area where there was a drive-in and you know how yeah. when you're in a live setting you see you like hey let me let me see those horns and you see all people like raising all mm. the horns and you get that adrenaline rush instead it was like hey guys let me hear you honk your horns so if you roll down your yes. window you just hear cars like honking so yeah, it, was, it was definitely an interesting atmosphere we but, didn't really have this in france i think this uh this is an american thing yeah. But I wish I, I I've never seen a like a drive a drive in a concert. I don't know what you call this, but a, like yeah, a it was drive in it was show. A dri they called it the um, what was it called? The Pandemica <laughs> because Metall uh, it was a Metallic. They were performing live. I, I think they were live, and then uh, every region like like uh, the time zones here in the state, they got they got a show. But um, mm. there's one show I want to talk about, Laura, really quick before we talk about the new album. Yeah, because this was so cool. Um. I think this is a very important to mention. You you conducted an interview. I know I'm interviewing mm -hmm. you now, but you conducted yeah. an interview with the legendary Scorpions. Yes. At Hellfest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Am, I, am I? Tell me more about that. How did that start? Because I watched the whole thing. You were great. That was great. I think you should yeah. do this as as another not, side gig. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not a TV host, so it took a, a lot of uh, the the interview was one thing, and I managed to stay natural because yeah. uh, I, I don't know it, it felt natural they were really really nice but the the thing that uh was um more like a, a challenge to me was that i had to present the whole uh, uh show because they were they were filming the scorpions show at hellfest and i had to be the tv host presenting and uh like intro uh, like uh, wow. making the introduction and the conclusion and the in between and uh, because i'm not I'm, I'm not a tv host so i was a bit uh freaking out I had to uh, learn a, a text uh, in a short amount of time, but in the end, it was a really um, a fun experience. I think uh, at the end of the day, everybody was happy, and it was a uh, hard work, but something new and uh, nice to be on the other side. You know. Yeah, that was really cool. I, I didn't even, I didn't even like you. You're saying like you're trying to 
to freaking out. I didn't notice that at all. You you held everything together. You were very mm. ca- you were catering to your guests. I mean, the scorpions. Mm. You get to say I interviewed the scorpions at Hellfest. I mean, how many people get to say mm. that? Not many. And that's yeah, yeah, sure. um, people who haven't seen it. I, I just searched it on Google. It's actually on a Facebook page, but um, you should yeah. put it on your Instagram. I want people to see that because that's really yeah, that's you're right. thing of beauty. You should make it make it like a routine thing. I'm just a fan, but I'd love seeing you, uh, you crush it out there. So next mm-hmm. year, maybe we sh- you should uh, do that. Maybe. That's just yes. a suggestion. Now, yeah. uh, let's talk about Head Above Water. This drops on January yes. 20th on Ear Music. Now, yeah. this album, this is a follow up to your 2019's uh, Burning Bright. I, yeah. I love that album. I loved it then. I love it today. I even went back and heard that along with your debut um hard hard blue mm-hmm. shot yeah uh laura you i mentioned this in our last conversation right and i don't forget things like this when i say it you really mm-hmm. have this uh seventh sense by the way if you want to keep drinking your tea keep because i'm gonna i'm gonna talk a lot here uh oh, you, really, okay. you, you really have this <laughs> finished seventh sense for incorporating these traditional sounds of mm-hmm. country blues uh southern and and hard rock in your compositions and i know those are just genres but you've created your own signature with the twist of everything that you are and, and like i know it's you you know when mm-hmm. i hear it southern hard blues you yeah, that's nice it. thank you, you i think that's the it. nicest compliment you could you could have uh, <laughs> no you, it's it's, me, it's so. and here's the thing I, i'm a texan that means a lot <laughs> think about it yes. i'm, ex- I'm yeah, exposed yeah. to this uh, uh music every day and my mom loves mm-hmm. country like she made me like appreciate country a lot more than than, than i have in the past but mm. and and i mentioned this on burning bright but you push the envelope even higher this time and you know all the while yeah uh, that's what i had tried yeah yeah uh, no no real quick i'm gonna throw some numbers at you because even your youtube account i i I monitored this from when we last spoke you racked Mm -hmm. up you now just surpassed 500k survivors Uh, survivors subscribers (laughs) survivors i'm thinking of i'm thinking of pandemic on the mind yes (laughs) 105 million views along the way Mm -hmm. we can definitely cut that out or maybe not (laughs) you know you know becoming the guitarist and singer with the most views even in the french and international rock scene this is a big Mm -hmm. deal here you are laura you know new album new year we're starting here soon uh new chapter even for the laura cox band even Uh, you know do you sense any i don't know any pressure for you when you decided to sit down and write again for a new album, you know, even just a follow, mm. you know, dropping a record before the pandemic, you got over that sophomore slump yeah. that people always talk about. Mm-mm-mm. Did that ever enter your head? Or are you just like, you know what, screw it. I'm going to do, uh, write the album the way I've never done before. Or was it just. I, I, I didn't put pressure on myself because I know I cannot work like this. Uh, and I, and the label was not pressuring me uh, either. And they just let me, uh, let me come whenever I'm ready, you know, when I'm saying, okay, I have the songs, we we can go in the studio and then they're booking. So they're, it's nice because they're, they're always waiting for me. And uh, because it took time, my, the previous album was uh, released in November, 2019. And now it's already mm-hmm. three years after. Three years. Uh, so yeah, yeah, it's been, uh, and I have to say, so during the pandemic, I wasn't um, at the beginning, beginning, I was uh, playing guitar a lot. And then uh, I felt a bit stuck in my apartment and felt like uh, I needed to go out and and breathe and distance a bit. And um, so I think I wasn't ready to write a new album. I could, during the pandemic and the lockdowns, I couldn't find inspiration. So I uh, distracted myself. Uh, I opened myself to other uh, activities and uh, until I finally got inspiration again. So it took time, but... Um, but I didn't put pressure on myself because I know it, it wouldn't uh, work. Um, and then I just recorded a, a few memos on my phone, a, a few uh, demos on my computer. And uh, while I was away in Portugal, then I came back to Paris and uh, we rehearsed with the band and arranged the songs um, together. But for the first time, I um, I worked more on my own because the, we were not uh, together you know, physically with the bandmates. Um, so the writing process was different this time and it felt, Mm -hmm. it it felt natural and fluid this way. So I'm happy with how it went and, um, and yeah, this happened like this, you know, and, uh, this, this album from the title track to old soul, which is, that may be my favorite track, by the way, uh, to seaside. And then that graceful closer Mm -hmm. glassy day, Mm -hmm. like, holy shit. I've never heard a track like that for me before um glassy day was such an epic closer i felt really felt like this was a 
you know, in other words, a refreshing take on the Southern rock music mm. scene. And and like I said, I'm going to repeat it again. I'm here in Texas where I'm exposed mm. to this genre almost daily. So yeah. you know what I mean when I say uh, <laughs> that, excuse me, that what you're doing mm. is, is working so well that mm. I can't wait for Texans to actually hear it. Like, like yeah. I went to another place is Nashville, Tennessee. Have you been in Nashville yet? No, never. Okay. So I just went to Nashville for the first time a couple of months ago with a friend of mine. Mm-hmm. And, uh, my goodness gracious you think texans are like the like country like people are way more country out there we were at the dolly parton roof uh rooftop okay. and uh there's like a pool up there and just the culture there and and, I, and as i was listening to this album i'm mm. just thinking man as far as like background music like people just like in like in the theme laura cox would just fit fit right in with even with like mm. the national music scene the Dallas- i wish i could visit this we're going to make it happen, all right? I work yeah, with a lot of promoters now. Obviously, a lot has happened mm-hmm. the last two years, so I do I know a lot of the promoters here in Dallas. Mm-hmm. I would love to help you book a show. I mean, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, it would be I, great. I, I, right. I said it then, like, I can't wait for you to come to Texas. I'm going to say it again. I can't wait for you to come to Texas. You <laughs> yeah, know? me too. And yeah, for this album, I try to include more of, uh, like, bluegrass elements. Like, uh, yeah, the, I the did banjo, notice that. The, yeah, the banjo, lap steel. I'm not, I'm, I, I'll always be a guitar player first and not a great banjo and lap steel player but i'm really interested in learning more uh, about these instruments because i know this can add something a bit more special and original to the to the rock um the classic uh, rocker you know uh tones and uh, mm-hmm. and uh, instruments yeah. so i really wanted to mix those instruments um with my music more and uh i think that's uh yeah that's what's um a bit different on this album and what I heard about this album is personality. I think your personality shines on this album more than any other. Mm. Um, I, I I sense it on Burning Bright, but I sense it a lot more mm. this time around. I wonder how much did things change from when you first started recording on this album or composing on this album to where you ended up finishing it? Did a lot change in between? Did nothing change? Did you have a specific no. sound in mind from day one? Uh, I, I, I know where I was going. But I think these songs were really fresh, uh, all recorded, uh, all uh, written in a, a sh- like a within maybe the first one, maybe uh, there are maybe six months apart, you know, whereas for the previous album, some songs I, I, I wrote them uh, maybe uh, two years before the recording of the album and, wow. and others were written, written during the recording. So there was a more more time uh, in between the writing of the songs but this time the the writing has been done in a more compact um, time lapse how yeah, many so, no i i wonder how many didn't make the final cut n- nothing because i came with the, and the, yeah exactly i know i had a few songs that i was not so sure about i had some demos in my computer i was not so sure i would be using them but in the end i put them aside maybe for another album uh, but uh, when we arrived in the studio, I knew exactly which songs were going to uh, be on the on the album. Man, I, I really feel like your your albums and the way you compose your songs, it's almost like paying a homage to like the old mm. country sound, you know, and I appreciate I appreciate things like that when because every everything's like TikTok blew up, for example, that's something like modern, like I, I can't keep up with that stuff. I can't yeah, get up with that stuff. I don't have this I, yet, I, but I think I'm But gonna be... you see what I mean? I'm an old soul. That's that's why yeah, I, yeah. I resonate with this song so much. Now, mm-hmm. a real a big part of this is because the sound was a big part of this record that I really loved. I'm an audiophile these days, mm-hmm. Laura. I'm very picky on how I want my music to sound, the way I want it to sound. This is recorded at ICP Studios in Brussels yes. by Erwin Autreek. Hopefully I'm not yes. butchering, butchering the name. Yeah, yeah. But no, also mastered right. by obviously Ted Jensen. And you know, he's known for his work mm-hmm. with Nora Jones, Green Day Eagles. Talk about uh, Irwin for a minute here. I'm sure there was that sense of comfortability in the studio for you, knowing you had someone like him working on this album, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the studio. So we've already recorded the second album at the ICP studio. So for me, it felt like it felt natural to come back there because it went really well the first time. We knew the place. We knew the engineer. We it it was like coming back home, you know, and for me, it was kind of um, reassuring in a way and uh, comfortable. To go back there because I knew what I what I was going to find find there, and mm-hmm. I'm not saying I'm going to record uh, all my next albums there because at some point it's nice to try other engineers and studios to have different types of uh, sounds. But for this one, I felt like uh, I uh, I was really happy to go back there, 
and um and yeah it went uh, even better than for the previous one like the, the atmosphere the um, everything was uh, i made a really clear schedule uh, because we only had a uh, um, maybe two weeks and uh, we didn't have uh, more space and time to uh, i don't know uh, for in uh, jamming improvisation everything had to be uh, organized like i i like doing this you know? Yeah, yeah, and uh, I saw your uh, video tour on YouTube. It, it that's mm. a really nice studio. Um, hey, yeah. well, it's not bad if you stick to that because it's it's a great studio. Yeah, yeah. It's always nice to have something like that. But shout out to Irwin, by the way, because it's important mm -hmm. to get your sound out there the way you want it to sound, the way you want the lyrics to deliver, the way you want yeah. the compositions to be like. And mm -hmm. I do. I come from a family of musicians, so I, I really notice things like that. Now, uh, Laura, we're reaching the last part of our conversation, by the mm -hmm. way. This, this has been so great. I, I love having you on here. Um, yeah, thank now, you. Now, now, no, thank you. I, I want to talk about this now. I don't know if, how much you want to dive into it because I'm, this is a, something recent. The challenges mm -hmm. of someone like you dealing with big changes, you know, um, mm -hmm. if I wanted to give you this platform to talk about it, if you can, you're a longtime guitarist and yeah. contributor to the Laura Cox band, you know, uh, Matthew albiak mm -mm -mm. yes um and i know we talked about him a lot on this last last time we spoke um mm -mm -mm. a great individual and he recently just stepped out if you wanted to yes. shed any light on that news and what the foreseeable future holds for the lineup for your band because i know you and matthew are very close yes yeah 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 so we've been through a lot but i decided it was not um um an easy decision to to take but i think for both of us it was time that I finally uh, took the, you know, uh, I took the place of the leader in the project because I, I've always been following everybody. And I think that for now, right now it's time for me to be the lead guitarist and try something new. I wanted to try, I've always wanted to try uh, uh, to uh, include a keyboard uh, in our um, lineup. So we tried this. We started uh, trying this in the studio because there are some songs. It's not really... Um, uh, like very in the front, but we have keyboards on, on on some songs on the new album, uh, and I felt like I wanted to take another direction and uh, maybe part ways with him. So maybe I hope he's going to start another project. I'm gonna go my own way, and we'll see how how it turns out. But for now, I'm motivated by by my project, by my music, and uh, yeah, I'm wishing him really uh, the good luck for the for the what's yeah. next. And uh, we'll see how it evolves. But yeah, I thought that this was time for me to, I don't know, be the leader for once. Yeah. And and it's important to make decisions like that, you know, and mm -mm -mm. you want to do things that are right for you. And and all the love to Matthew, too, because you guys mm -hmm. are, are are still friends, you know, and, and yeah. you guys are still close together. And uh, both of you made really great, meaningful posts. And, and I read and I read them and people mm -hmm. haven't read it. They uh, checked the Facebook out. And um, but it's. It's a new chapter, like I mentioned, right? It's it's, yes. it's exciting too at the same time. So yeah, I'm excited um, too. Really, yeah. I'm trying to see the positive in this uh, in this, and uh, I'm trying to focus on this. And I'm really motivated, motivated, and excited by the release of the this album. And for me, uh, learning new guitar parts and trying to rearrange the songs and going somewhere else, musically speaking, is a I don't know a new challenge that I'm going to try to face alone on my own this time. Yeah. And uh, we'll see we'll see how it goes. So. Wait, let, let's wait and uh, and see. And yeah. I hope a lot of people are going to discover this new lineup uh, on tour and uh, and like it and make their own opinion. And uh, yeah, I'm sure it's going to be fun. I can't wait. It's always nice to have something like that to look forward to the next chapter. Yeah. And and, and yeah. you you did it on such a like perfect timing. New year, new album, new lineup, and it's just yeah. I felt that then, this was the right moment. Yeah. yeah, new new show, new tour. The album is coming out. I think this was the right uh, right timing. In a new show in Texas, just saying. And uh, <laughs> I hope so. Uh, uh, Laura, we've covered a good amount of ground on this great conversation. Mm -hmm. It's always great to have you back on here, and, and the discussions yeah, we've had are are always so great. Circling back around to what I said earlier about you know from from where you started to where you are now, you know, what do you see? You know, as, as the most rewarding part for someone like you who is now at this point in their career. Like, I'm excited to see where you go from here. You know, celebrating the successes you've you've had are also important. You know. Yeah, I'm 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 so yeah, I'm so thankful and grateful. For me, the biggest reward is to be able to live from my music. Uh, a few years ago, I would have never believed this, and it's possible. So I'm really, yeah, I'm motivated. I know we we faced uh rough times with the no shows and the 
lockdowns and hopefully this is behind us we'll we'll see but uh yeah and even if something is a uh, so I don't know some shows are canceled again I can still mm -hmm. put my my inspiration and my music on YouTube and try to you know, use this platform um, in a, in a good way to to promote new music we'll see but um yeah for me the biggest reward is to be able to just make my music I think a lot of people are just trying to live for for from their music and they they're struggling so they have to uh to play in cover bands and uh, like a uh, uh, like a long uh, long shows in uh in bars uh, i don't know I, mm -hmm. i'm happy to be able to play my my songs and uh and to meet new people on the road and to visit new countries it's a really it's a really a great experience for me man uh well said and and again thank you from the bottom of my heart it's always so great to speak to you it's like i said um i learned much more I learned so much about myself as much I as I learned from my guests. So mm. uh, thank you so much for sharing everything you had, because it's not easy to just talk about topics out in the open. The way you translated your work into something as beautiful as the music mm. you put out into this product, it's 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 great. You know, I can't wait mm. for people to hear it. And and uh, yeah. I'm, I'll be Thank counting you. that a day since till you come to Texas. Now, before yes. I let you before I let you go, mm -hmm. this is this is something interesting because we're kind of we're playing shows again. Right. We're going to shows again. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know how much of a of a uh, film buff you are, but give me like two or three shows you binged during the pandemic and why you recommend them. <laughs> Tiger King doesn't uh, count. <laughs> no, but I I don't I am not even sure if I've watched a lot of movies during the pandemic and shows. <laughs> I'm um, honestly I didn't really watch. Uh, I I was uh, busy going out, uh, yeah. going out, spending time <laughs> in, in nature. And I didn't really spend so. Uh, so much time in front of netflix or and that's okay or, yeah yeah yeah. I, uh, that's motivation yeah. to go out that's motivation to go out yeah. of your house and do things like there's yeah, an yeah. outside world aside from what you're sitting down on watching i'm not that. a big movie movie fan or tv shows i've been uh, I'm mostly uh usually you know i'm just practicing guitar with the tv in the in the yeah. back like always on with just kind of a background uh, noise but not really watching or looking i'm just uh just to feel that I'm not alone in my apartment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But then, well, then practicing all day. Yeah, I do the same thing. I, sometimes I, I'm working on a project and I would just, just to get rid of the silence, you just keep like the uh, yeah. background, whatever show. I always put on The Office because I just love The Office, but that, but I grew mm. up on that show. Okay. But um, Laura, uh, this has been uh, amazing. Again, do you have any last words, any shout outs, anything else you'd like to plug in or mention as far as uh, Head Above Water before we finish things off here? I don't know, like in no, this video tour uh, dates uh yeah whatever, you, whatever are, you can and cannot say so so in uh, the, um, the first video uh, music video should be out um in about uh wait is it out today two, the the video uh, music video yeah did no, this because, it's, uh, okay okay did i, I speak I, too I, soon <laughs> No, because I didn't even sh shot anything, so it cannot be today. The music okay. video is not made. <laughs> okay, 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 be, okay. No, it should be out and maybe uh, this month for sure before Christmas. Uh, the first one is going to be out, uh, yeah, in a few weeks. So this yeah. is uh, what I'm looking forward to, and um, and then yeah, I'm really uh, we are preparing the release of the album. We have um, some tour dates uh, planned, but not in the US for now. I, I really hope we can come. I'm, um, I, I hope It'll we can happen. come to, I believe. Yeah, to, at least to NAM in April. I would be really uh, happy to go to uh, yeah, Los Angeles for the NAM, but uh, we will see. Uh, I'm really excited about the release and then we'll see what's uh, happening from there. Yeah, uh, when you come to Met, uh, NAM, I'm, I may actually be, be there because I missed the last ah. couple of years. And I've actually okay. have a couple of friends who are working the show. So if if I'm there, let's I would love yes. to come and say hello. And yeah, it, it'd be great to actually it'd be like like longtime friends talking to each other and then now we're finally, <laughs> finally meeting yeah. up. But um uh, much love to you. Nothing but the best from you mm -hmm. here on out. Have have a great uh Christmas, have a great rest of the year. Um, Thank you, you too. Have a great new year and have a have a great time leading up to the release too. It's like the anticipation yes. is like really kicking in, right? So yeah, it's a lot of work, but um, yeah, like I said, it's just uh, excitement too. So work that you're really good at and what you're really mm -hmm. passionate about. And uh, everyone who's listening, this is the amazing Laura Cox. Head above water drops January twentieth on Ear Music. Uh, do me and Laura a favor. Uh, buy the record because the fans, yes. you know, the bands can't do without you. your help. That really, I'm old fashioned. The old soul, right? I'm thinking about that song. I buy yes. records. That's like 
sitting on the corner of my room. Like yeah, me too. I'm still buying buying CDs and vinyls, and I've been cassettes. Uh, ba bands are releasing cassettes again. Yes, remember that? I saw this. I saw this. <laughs> we just got a. We just got a. Me and my family, we just got a VCR a couple mm. couple of months ago. People were like, like "What is a VCR?" <laughs> Trust me, Google it. It's like a time machine. It that's literally yeah. what it is. Um, I still have this. I think I still have VCRs on my. Uh, I still I still have stuff. mine, but it was broken. So we had to we yeah. had to buy one from eBay that was like two hundred dollars in U.S. Mm. dollar. It was like they're yeah. so pricey. Obviously, they don't yeah. make them anymore. But um, mm -hmm. I think the old souls got to stick together, right? Yeah. Yes. So. Um, yeah. And uh, uh, everyone is listening. You can listen to this podcast on all major podcast streams out there. Check us out on interviewunderfire.com. Laura, let's stay in touch. Um, uh, yes, I will sure. keep you posted once this episode airs. Take care of yourself. Okay, perfect. And, Thanks uh, a lot. I'll see you soon, okay? Much love. Yes, I hope so. In Texas. Goodbye. Right. Take care. Bye-bye. Hey guys, thanks for listening to Interview Under Fire podcast. If you guys liked what you heard, please subscribe and share our channel. And please leave a five-star review as that helps us tremendously. If you'd like to check out more, visit www.interviewunderfire.com or our social media channels on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And finally, we want to thank you all for the support you've been giving us. Keep it burning.